Welcome to the Pure Prison Podcast, a Society First production. My name is Shai Hillman. Before we begin, we want to give an introduction of our goals, and that is to provide a platform that identifies both the problem and the solutions to the criminal justice system. The purpose behind Pure Prison Podcast is to give a voice not only to those who have been impacted by the system, but also to those who are positively impacting the system. Society First wants to ensure that all guests feel free to express their thoughts and beliefs. With that being said, not all views and beliefs of those interviewed are necessarily the views of Society First. With that, we hope that we will inspire you to get involved, for it's only together that we will make a difference. Well, welcome back to Pure Prison, everyone. Today, I am so excited. We have someone that I've been waiting to talk to, and his name is Neil Foltz. He is with the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition. Um, let me go ahead and put that up, and then I'm going to bring him in, and we're going to go ahead and um, inter- let him introduce himself. Well, good morning. How are you, Neil? I am wonderful. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited for our conversation. <laughs> awesome. So. Um, go ahead and tell us a little bit about uh, your organization. And one of the things that um, I, I want to get out right away is your platform and the goals, the primary goal of your organization. Okay. Uh, yeah. So our organization, the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, we are an organization that's led by, made up of people with past felony convictions, our family members, and we are geared towards the full empowerment of people with past felony convictions in the state of Florida. We work to remove barriers to reentry uh, for those of us uh, who have been impacted by the criminal justice system, our families. And that means everything from uh, pushing Amendment 4 in Florida, uh, which restored the voting rights for 1.4 million people in 2018, to fighting for you know, reforms that allow allow for full access to housing, allow for people to get employment, uh, uh, despite the fact that we might have a past felony conviction, the ability to, you know, have a have a a better uh, parole, probation, community supervision experience so that we can, you know, better uh, set people up for success who are getting ready to reintegrate in the community. So uh, for us, it's really about people. Uh, it's about how do we create a more humane reentry system um, and, and and set up a win-win scenario in which those of us uh, who, you know, are walking through uh, this experience, uh, we've, we've got opportunities and those of us uh, and those people we live with in, the na- in our neighborhoods and in our communities, they're gonna have a safer uh, safer neighborhood in the process. That is incredible. And that goes right along with society, you know, with our communities. It's it's what's coming out, what's going into our societies. What's the product that we're doing? What are we producing inside and and bringing out? Now you have a long history of uh, public service, and you've committed your life to serving your community, and that we know. I mean, that bill, uh, what was it, Amendment Four, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. That was incredible work, incredible work. I was watching that even before my own advocacy started. Um, I was paying close attention because that was really important. Now, what inspires you to bring this hope um, to those that, you know, and, and make a positive impact? What, what was the inspiration for you? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it was like just the real world experience of trying to kind of put my life back together after making some mistakes, blowing up my, my, my life as I knew it at the time. Um, and then just seeing the power of second chances firsthand. So for, for, for me, as I was trying to like begin again, uh, I was blessed enough to be able to volunteer at a local homeless shelter. And in that process, I began to see like community at work. You know, what happens when we meet people as people without the stigmas, without, you know, the labels and we, we, we unite around each other and, and, and amazing things can happen. So I, I was brought 
in as a volunteer, ended up getting offered a job. I ended up running a homeless shelter and it totally transformed my life. And, and I, I really became kind of, you know, I like to say that there's not a better evangelist for second chances than somebody who's benefited from second chance, you know, or third chance or fourth chance, what have you. Uh, but uh, ultimately that's, that's where it comes from is, is just my life experience and seeing what happens and, and the impact you can have. Um, and I'll, I'm kind of rambling here, but for me, it was also like the, on the professional side of things, I, you know, my job meant a lot to me and I, and I lost kind of like that piece of, of who I was, uh, kind of went through forced retirement, so to speak. And I saw a lot of things that I was dreaming about and hoping for, uh, get put to the side. And, and, um, I just, I just hope that I can be helpful for people who are going through something similar, uh, that they can, uh, you know, that my, my, my experience can mean something uh, to, in somebody else's life. Absolutely. That, that touches on the personal. Um, let me go ahead and turn some of this stuff. That touches me um, because that's my goal. Um, my past, I'm not my crime, you know, um, and you move forward and just hope and pray that you touch someone, you know, something, help them whatever it may be, give back. I love it. You're amazing. I, I watch you all the time. Um, oh, that's now, one of the questions that we had, um, that we've put together for you is, as the legislative intent has become abundantly clear to hold no true interest in bringing reform to the criminal justice system, what do you believe needs to happen to force them to bring a tangible reform? Yeah, I... I think that being honest is is so important. And I think that that included in that question is some real honesty as it relates to where we are in Florida right now. Uh, there is not real political will within the Florida legislature for transformative criminal justice reform or criminal legal reform um, measures. Uh, we just saw this um, in terms of there was a veto of a very limited but important uh, piece of uh, expungement legislation that passed unanimously through both the House and the Senate and then got vetoed by the governor. And so we look at that as kind of a barometer. We're like, oh my gosh, we can't move that piece of legislation. And again, for the tens of thousands of young people with past felony convictions who would have been impacted by that huge, huge deal. But in comparison to what the kind of transformational policies that we're seeing implemented and passed in other states and in other places across the country, um, it's just a reminder of the challenges that we have. So from our perspective, um, we, don't, we don't have the luxury that some people might have of of, of kind of like seeing this as a debate, right? Like, oh, it's a political science exercise. Let's just sit in our air conditioned rooms and wait for a couple of years until things get better and then maybe we can do something. Um, for us, it's like, hey, where's the opportunity right here, right now? And what we're seeing is, is that even in the state of Florida where there is a lot of diversity, there are pockets, there are local municipalities, there are local judicial districts in which we see people who want to change the criminal legal system the way that we want to change the criminal legal system. So there's state attorneys, public defenders, uh, local mayors uh, that we're working with right now to help implement, you know, second chance hiring, to uh, uh, ban the box uh, for housing, um, you know, take these kind of steps that are necessary to help, you know, make, make lives better for real people right here, right now. Um, but the truth is, to your question, it, it's not the best statewide environment right now. Amen. <laughs> now, one of the other questions is, it's actually, it's, it is, as society, we've created an unforgiving, unforgiving criminal justice system. And, and we say that because our empathy is, just seems to have vanished. Um, it basically focuses purely on the punitive nature of justice. Now, how has this impacted us as a society as a whole? What's your perspective on that? Yeah, I, I, I think it, it, it's, it's created a scenario in which we're, we're gouging out our own eyes, right? As we're trying to stab somebody else, right? Like this overly punitive kind of 
approach to how we deal with living together, right? And 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 what it's like, you know, to 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 walk walk life out together in community, you know, when the punitive approach is all we've got, right? And that's our go-to and that's where people rally around. We we see the dehumanization that is so endemic in our communities and in our society, in which somebody can, you know, be labeled and and and, and given the stigma for life. That it's like, oh, you are the worst thing that you've ever done. And we're at every step of the way, we're going to continue to punish you. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can't find a way to get back into the community. You can't find a way, you know, to actually reestablish some your social network, you know, or to build a social network of community around you that you can't get employment. You can't get access to opportunity. Right. And it all stems from exactly what you're talking about. This un yielding need to continue to punish. It just doesn't make any sense if you really think about how we create healthy communities, how we create safer communities. And there are moments where we feel like we're making progress. I looked at Amendment 4. I, there's a story I always tell about kind of, I think Amendment 4 put in its context talks about the, exactly what you're talking about, which is how we see each other fundamentally. Um, because yes, it's about politics, so to speak. It's about voting, so to speak. But the truth is we didn't view it from a political lens at all, right? From our perspective, I remember the conversation when I was talking to Desmond, who's our executive director, 2016, I guess, the two years before past, and really coming at it. So this was me growing into the movement was, like talking to him about the language that we use in very political terms, like how do we, you know, communicate in a way that, you know, connects with conservatives and liberals and da 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 da, because that's kind of the world I came from. And I remember him telling me, Neil, he's like, I'm not disagreeing with anything that you're saying. He's like, but this story is actually way deeper than that. It's like at the end of the day, we win on Amendment Four if people see us as human beings, and if they see us as something less than that, then we lose. And it was a real important reframing for me to know just how deep these actual stories go uh, when we talk about, you know, an individual who is trying to, you know, live with the label, live with the stigma, live with, you know, the fact that we, as somebody, if you have a felony conviction in our society, you, know, you have the legal right to hate me, you know. <laughs> And, and, and for a person that's convicted to move forward, um, at some point, some for some people, it's impossible. It's literally impossible um, because they have not been given the tools or a helping hand in any way, in any way. Um, again, amazing. Now, this is going to be the last question. Now, this one's kind of lengthy, okay? And it has a lot to do with the organization okay. society first. So, now, it's our belief at Society First that Florida would benefit from implementing a new effective parole system that guarantees offenders who show that they have become proven products of change a second chance to be productive members of society. Now, this would allow a filtering system that could best protect society from being re-victimized a second time, while also providing redemptive opportunities to those who have made a life-altering decisions in the past. So what's your take on the excuse me, prospect of such forgiving restorative practices and would it best serve our communities? Yeah, I, I think the idea of adding another pathway to a restorative process for people who, you know, have made changes in their lives, who, you know, are, I, I think about friends of mine who are currently serving life without parole sentences, right? And, and, and the idea of having an additional pathway for somebody, you know, like you said, uh, who is to change their life and, 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 and we all can see that the, that the best way forward is through forgiveness and redemption and restoration, not, you know, continuing the nonstop punitive approach and, and basically saying like, hey, what happened then is is going to give you no options, no ability, no pathway, you know, for the rest of your life. I, I think we can do better than that. And so, yeah, the idea of opening up another uh, a pathway, one that existed here for a while, you know, I think is healthy. And, and you know, we're seeing big changes in, in DOC right now uh, under the direction of Mark, and at least because I don't know if you're aware, but I was current. I was a formerly incarcerated person in Florida, um, so I saw the before, and I see the now. 
and I do see changes um, that are being made and it's, it's wonderful. Um, but that is a main thing of ours is, you know, if you are, if you've given that restoration and, and you see that and, and it's healing and that person has healed, cause that's what that is. That is a better product to move reenter into our society, you know, so let's help. Let's help. I mean, I'm all about reentry. I'm all about it. I love it. Um, that's yeah. my, that's my big thing, my passion. Well, it's interesting because I also think that we're all in this together, right? And so that we bet we are actually better together. And the idea that sometimes these conversations, I know not mine and your conversation, but when I'm talking and, or when you're talking to other folks in the community, it almost feels like people just see it through the silo of like, oh, we're helping this returning citizen or we're helping. Right? And, and while that is part of the story, the truth is I think so many people benefit. I was at a lunch on Friday with some folks who they were telling me about the person at their job who is you know 10 years in who was previously incarcerated and to hear how that impacted their life how they view people differently how that created health and you know an, an, a, a positive worldview from their perspective it was like we all do feed off of each other and so if we're going to like close off these pathways like we're all actually, you know, being punished by that. And and that's the, that's one of the big, big messages that we just try and preach anywhere and everywhere that we can, that we are all in this together, whether, you know, and, and so this idea that it's like, oh, well, we're just gonna silo somebody for that one thing that they did in their past and then never care about them again, never, and think that that's not gonna have an impact on us as a community and as a society, that, that there's no evidence for that. Amen. Because it's a ripple effect. It's a ripple effect. It, it touches so many people. And, and that's what, another thing that I try to bring forward. And, and when I speak to society out there and get that message out that think about it, you personally probably have someone in your family who's been incarcerated in the, the daughter or the son, or the mother, or the father. They're all affected. We're all in this together. And we have the numbers. I always say that we have the numbers. If we get together, we can blow their mind. <laughs> that's right that's right and we're everywhere right we are uh, everywhere yes and um we're all for it if there is anything as pure prison can do as society first we we're on it we're with you we love what you do um if we can be a part awesome. of anything we're in it uh that band the box yes let's do it <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then I, I'd love to follow up with you because we're watching some of these local initiatives start to take shape across the state. Um, you know, I'd love to just kind of follow up and keep talking with yes. you about that. And Absolutely. it's really cool to see what you're doing. So thank you for oh using your gosh. platform the way you do. Thank you. We can't wait to have you back. Uh, Society First, like I said, is definitely, we follow you. We love you guys. Um, can't wait to be a part of your mission. And, uh, Thank you for being here today. It was awesome. Such a and thanks for rolling with me. All of a sudden, that that beginning meeting was like, oh my gosh, we're going in, in this place. So thank you for that. I'm really grateful. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up. You have a great day. Thank you so okay. much. Sure. All right. Okay. Right. You guys, that was Neil Volts, and he, again, is with the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition um, doing big things. Uh, Facebook, go follow them, like their page. Watch what they do, amazing things. They are all about the community, society. Like and subscribe on YouTube, you guys. Remember, peace or pain. I haven't said it in a while. Have a great